Here's something they didn't teach you at Stanford, Ben. Whenever you can, put a company in your mouth. Let's talk about finance lessons from the third episode of Billions based on my work experience at Goldman Sachs in New York City and based on my work experience at the top hedge funds in the world. Now, please be sure to comment and like and stick around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna grade the episode for Wall Street Realism. What do you think? Not as good as I remember. And that's a problem because I own a hell of a lot of these things and I'm about to own more. Now, what Bobby Axelrod said there might be the best investment tip ever. What he means by putting a cookie in your mouth is the best investors often use or try the products before investing in the company. And I'm sure that your best investments have been the ones where you've tried or used the product. And that is exactly what Bobby does in this episode, which I'll explain in much more detail in a second. Now, in this episode, we learn about how an activist hedge fund investor thinks as Axelrod buys a large position in a cookie company called Yumtime. And he does this so he can bully the management team and make a fortune. And the CEO of Yumtime is about to freak out as he finds out about Axelrod's investment in his company. Word is Bobby Axelrod is up to a 4.9% stake in Yumtime. <laughs> now, the CEO freaked out here because there's a law that if an investment firm like Axe Capital owns 5% or more of a company in order to get voting rights and change how the company operates, then Axe Capital has to file what's called a 13D on sec.gov so that we as investors can all get access to this information. And the, the new law in 2024 is that you have to file the 13D within five days of owning more than 5% of the company. And this yum time CEO knows he's out of the job if this happens. And the second this happens, the stock usually goes up big time if a well-known activist like Carl Icahn's firm files a 13D on sec.gov. And when this happens, and a reputable investor like Bobby Axelrod invests, then many other hedge funds often buy the shares, causing the stock to rise big time. And when you buy a large stake in a company, you can get a board seat and bully the management team in order to unlock shareholder value, meaning make the stock go up. As members of the board of Yum Time, you must want to know if my acquiring almost 5% of your company is a vote of confidence. It isn't. Now, it's crucial for investors like us to know if a 13B has been filed for a company that we're investing in. So how can we check if an activist investor has filed a 13D? Well, step one, go to sec.gov. Step two, enter the company name, like GameStop, for example. Step three, select ownership disclosures. Step four, select all ben beneficial ownership. Then what you do is you click on the 13D for more detail. Now here we see in this example that activist investor Ryan Cohen filed that he owned 9% of GameStop back in 2020, which eventually caused GameStop to rise almost 30 times, yes, 30 times, in the month of January of 2021. So as part of your investment research on companies, please monitor 13D filings on sec.gov. Mr. Axelrod is prepared to increase his position and file with the SEC. Accurate. Activist hedge funds can be ruthless. And top activist investor Carl Icahn once said this, CEOs are paid for doing a terrible job. If the system wasn't so messed up, guys like me wouldn't make this kind of money. There's a road for all of you being out on your and this is brutal, but activist investors argue that this is good for the capital markets from a Darwinian perspective because this enhances shareholder value. And some argue that this enhances the economy, the economy as well, because the most competitive companies rise to the top. And as Machiavelli, Machiavelli once said, the end justifies the means. The young time profits have declined eight years running while executive compensation has soared 300%. So this here is an income statement, and there's two ways to increase profits, meaning net income and the bottom line here. One way is to grow revenue here, which is also called sales. And the other way is to cut expenses like sales and marketing, research and development, and general and administrative expenses. And Axelrod wants to increase profits partially by cutting GNA, meaning general and administrative expenses. And CEO compensation is often part of GNA. Hutch Bailey III is the CEO and will be until he decides otherwise. Now, Yum Time CEO is the grandson of the founder and the son of the previous CEO. And skeptical investors hate nepotism as they often say that the first generation makes the money, the second spends it, and the third has none. 
And to make matters more interesting, Axe's enemy, the district attorney's father, is good friends with the Yum Time board member. Bobby Axelrod knows about you and me. What? And some crooked billionaires aren't just interested in making a fortune. It's about power. And when you have power, people will always try to take it away from you. And the genius of this show is that it is so well researched as many hedge fund billionaires favorite movie is Highlander, which is a fictional movie character that has unlimited power. It's like Highlander. There can be only one. Accurate. Power is the ultimate currency. Now, once you make your fortune, then what's next? Maybe it's running for office, which of course is what happens with Mike Prince in a couple of seasons. Let's go back to Axelrod versus Yumtime. Now, here Ax will try to reason with an influential Yumtime board member. And most successful people understand that you need to bond before discussing business as he does right here. Roger. The true way you make a pizza Napolitana. This place is the pizza of my youth. In fact, before you go to a meeting with someone for the first time, what I want you to do is this. Go to their Instagram profile or X profile and see who they follow. If it's baseball, discuss baseball with them. And to learn how to network to get anything you want in business, please download my networking book for free from this source here. And nothing is more important in business than bonding and networking, which they don't teach you in business school. Now, in this episode, bonding is a key theme, uh, as we can see in this next video clip here, when Axe is bonding with one of his employees and he discusses baseball. You're gonna be our Brian Doyle. Who? Brian Doyle's a utility player on the 78 Yankees. Now, this bonding strategy worked, as we can see with the next Yum Time board meeting in a second. But watch this clip here where uh, Axelrod bonds uh, over dinner uh, with the one of the board members of Yum Time. When I was 11 years old till I was 14, I was a paper boy. And when I finished my route, I'd pick up a Yum Time scrumpet. And this bonding strategy worked, as we can see, with the next Yum Time board meeting. Streamlining inefficiencies and trimming bloated executive compensation and perquisites, beginning with the corporate jet. So they boost profits by cutting GNA, meaning general and administrative expenses. And as this gets smaller, profits rise, and so does the stock. I move that effective immediately, Hutchinson Bailey III be removed from his duties as chief executive officer. Now, the influential board member votes to eliminate the CEO, so Bobby's threat of filing a 13D actually worked out. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? And Axe gets his way, and the best business people are often unemotional. Now, the best investors are often highly unemotional as well, and the worst performing investors and executives are really emotional. And so most investors are emotional, and they sell their stocks at the worst time. And as Warren Buffett said, the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on sale. Buffett also said that you have to be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Emotional business people lose money. And Axelrod. Well, now you're off my Christmas list. And to add insult to injury to Axe's enemy, Chuck Rhodes, this happens. I now move to remove Evelyn Benson from this body and delegate her seat to Robert Axelrod. What? Axe got what he wanted without having to increase his stake and filing a 13D, so he saved a ton of money on potential massive legal expenses. Let's talk about grading of this episode for Wall Street realism with a buy, hold, or sell rating. The threat of filing a 13D is real, and it terrifies CEOs as they don't want to be fired and they don't want new board members to bully them. And this is exactly what activist hedge funds do, and this is what Axe did in this episode. As a result, I'm going to give this episode a buy rating. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon in our next reaction video when we react to episode four. Thank you. Now, one of the top mutual fund portfolio managers in the world that's made a fortune investing, his name is Peter Lynch from Fidelity. What he used to do is he used to try and use the products before investing in companies. And to learn how Peter Lynch made a fortune investing, please read this book. It's called One Up on Wall Street, which has a subtitle here of how to use what you already know to make money in the market. And I promise you, this book here will help you massively outperform the markets based on this concept.